put this shit out. All right. Man, so episode six, Books Are Cowards podcast, man. Got my fucking brother with me. Very esteemed, special fucking guest, man. Really, really, really blessed and honored to be able to talk to him with y'all today, man. I got my fucking dog, Mr. Tony Bobbitt, man. What's good with you, bro? What's good, my man? What's good, Mike? Man, everything we blessed this way, man. How you doing, man? Yeah, bro, I'm just trying to make it make sense, man. For real, for real, man, bro. First of all, man, thank you for having us on. Thank you for having me on, man. You know, um, I'm all about the creativity, man, and positivity, man. So... Anything you ever need from me outside of this podcast, man, you know, we here with you, bro. Man, I appreciate you, man. Likewise, of course, you already know me, man. This is a pleasure to talk to you, dog. Oh, yeah, bro. This is what we do, man. We help, we gotta help each other now, man. You know, the world's so messed up these days, bro. You ain't no telling what's gonna pop off, man. Yeah, yeah. Shit is crazy, huh? Man, but shit. Me, I I was born in the early 90s. I see you, you was born in the late 70s, so. For me, I kind of, I remember the 90s a little bit, but like, I don't really remember it like that. So I know for you, it's probably the same. Like, you probably got, you know, some, you feel me, remember to the 80s, but like, what's it really like growing up, like, late 80s, early 90s, especially in Daytona, man? Like, you be telling us it it was crazy, but what was it like your word? Growing up in the, growing up in the early, the late 80s, man, early 90s in Daytona, you know, Daytona Beach, Florida, man, you know, there's a lot of discipline going on, you know. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people from my neighborhood growing up, mm-hmm. we were we were blessed to have uh, parents in the home, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and a lot of us didn't have mom and daddy in the home, but what we did have, we had a we, we had a parent, you know yeah. what I mean? Hell yeah. So 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 on the west side of town in Daytona Beach, all the parents knew each other because of the simple fact that. The elementary school, West Side Elementary, sat right there. Holly Hill Middle mm-hmm. sat right there. Then we got Mainland High School. Yeah. But growing up, man, growing up, man, everybody looked out for each other. It ain't like it is like right now. You know what I'm saying, Mike? Yeah, that's fine. Everybody, we all took care of each other, bro. From, like from from somebody watching each other kids or somebody getting their ass whooped yeah. or, 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 <laughs> or on the positive note. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. It, 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 it was fun growing up, bro. You know, we were at peace. That we we didn't know we were broke kids. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. we were just we were living life, man. But I could say a lot of discipline growing up, bro. That's fine, bro. That should have took you a long way. So like me knowing me, like I know Florida. That's really like a football state to me. So like, what age did you really get into basketball? And like, did you try football at all or not? You was straight back. You know what, Moss? You know what, Monster Mike? I, uh, when we when we get off this podcast, man, I'm gonna post a picture in the jumbo. Right. I actually played football all the way up until high school, bro. But yeah, you know, once once I got into basketball, I I, I can honestly say I got into basketball Damn. around probably about six or seven years old, bro. Okay. Yeah. But but playing youth basketball, I would always play youth football too. True. But basketball was always my passion, bro. So yeah. I just went along with it. That makes sense. So you started both around age six? That's crazy. Yeah. From like the ages, but between the ages from six to eight, I started playing basketball and football, man. That's crazy, bro. I was playing basketball when I was two, three years old, bro. I made my first shot on the fucking 10 foot rim when I was four. <laughs> I should have been with you. I mean, come on, man. We, hey, that was our dream, bro, to, to make that, that first bucket on the 10 foot rim. Nigga, that you know was, nigga, I thought I was going to the league, bro, until I was like seven, <laughs> eight, bro. My fucking cousin, bro, his stepdad uh-huh. killed my dream, bro. That, that, that bitch I was the shit when I started slapping the backboard. Nigga, man, <laughs> I, you couldn't tell me shit when I made that first shot, bro. Oh, man, <laughs> the days, man. For real, bro, shit, man. So, like, when did you really know that, all right, this basketball shit, I could, I could probably, you know, play, you know, get my education, take care of with this shit, or even take it to the to a higher level than that. When did you really know, like, you got a chance with this shit to make it up? You know what, Mike? To be honest, man, when I was a, when I was a little youngster, man, yeah, I, I I knew for a fact that basketball, and I tell people this a lot of times, man. God, you 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 destined for to do certain things in life, and I just think God placed me out of a, a, a situation. He put me in a situation where basketball was was the key for me man and once I realized as a youngster man I could be pretty good at this 
like I actually took it and ran with it a little bit, man. And, and that was my focus. I mean, basketball has just been every day for me. Yeah. When I was when I was little, Mike, that's all I wanted to do was just hoop. Yeah, I didn't yeah. want to do nothing else. I just wanted to play ball, bro. Yeah. And I think that's what I think that's what carried the weight for me, man. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful, man. That's, your, that's where you need it for you. So, like, you know, what what challenges did you face getting into it? Because you know, obviously, it wasn't all sweet. Like, you know, getting into your beat up career. I mean, I had to learn to be coachable at a young yeah. age, you know, because I thought, you know, I always thought the game was just about coming down, shooting the ball, and not guarding your man, mm-hmm. and, you know, not playing with your teammates, not being a good teammate. Mm-hmm. So as a young age, my dad, you know, he installed that early into me to be a good teammate and play with play, play with your team. Because I didn't know, man, I'm just a young 9, 10-year-old kid out there just jacking up shots, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was a shooting guard, too. I don't know what I'm yeah, I'm a shooting guard, so I'm figuring, like, hey, my job is to shoot the ball, so, but, you My dad was able to show me, and my cousins was able to show me the right way to play the game, man. That's what's up. That's good, man. So, like, who, who'd you model your game after? Like, who'd you looking, who'd you looking up to on the court? It's not like you got a good relationship with your dad, so off the You court, know man. what? You know what? This is crazy to say, <laughs> but I like Penny Hardaway, bro. Like I tell people, my favorite team was Orlando Magic. Yeah. But if we say, if if you asking me this question, who would I powder my game behind? I would say like somebody like Penny and Reggie Miller. Yeah. But if you ask me, if you ask me, who would I powder my game behind in college? My favorite college basketball player of all time is Juan Dixon from Maryland. Oh my god, bro! My motherfucking cousin used to love that nigga, bro. Yeah, bro, that's my favorite, bro. Ron Juan has always been my favorite, bro. bro he my, knows that. I told him that. Nigga, my yeah, cousin gonna favorite, lose bro. when he hit his shit, bro. My nigga, my nigga and I'm pretty sure. Nigga, bro. And I'm pretty sure there's some people out there that would say, oh, you know, I'm pretty sure there's some ex-college basketball that would say Tony Bobby, too. I'm pretty sure I got one or two out there, but yeah, I'm man. telling y'all, I'm telling y'all from T. Bobby experience, if I had to say who I patted my game out there, I'm gonna say Penny and Reggie. But my favorite basketball player as a college basketball player was Juan Dixon. Yeah, Juan was a motherfucker. Niggas not even. He was a mu- He was a motherfucker, bro. Like I was like a shorty, bro. Like I was literally like five, six years old watching this nigga, bro. Shit was crazy. Man, Juan could play, bro. He was too much, man. So you know, getting into like you know your high school years. You know, I know you ha- had a real close relationship with your mom, and I know you tragically, you know, found her. Um, Pat, you you was the one who found her when she passed away. So, like, you want to tell us about that or your relationship with your mom before this happened or anything like that? Oh, man. So, you know, my dad's a preacher. Yeah. So I got the best of both worlds. You know, I would go home to my dad, and it was discipline, and go and go to mom's, and it was a little bit of freelancing. You feel uh, yeah, me? Yeah, of course. So, so. So the real, of course, you know, that's any kid, yo. You get, you got the mom that's cool, or the dad that's just strict, or you got the dad that's cool and the mom strict. Yeah. But I can, you know, I can honestly say, dad cool as hell. He was just dad got his rules. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And mom, mom had her rules. It was just a little bit of lenient. You know what I mean? Like Definitely. she knew I, she knew I was the only boy, so she let me get away with a little bit of murder and here and there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. but you know. Being a kid, man, you know, I was a 16-year-old kid, man. I came home on on, on, on April 17th, man, 1997, man. And mm-hmm. I found my old girl, you know, you know, she was cut up, man. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and I tell the story, man, because I want people to know, like, this is real life, bro. This ain't no cartoon. This ain't, this ain't like, play, play. This is what I saw when I was a 17-year-old kid. Well, 16, going on 17, and... Yeah. You know, my mom was brutally murdered, bro, and and I think, you know, like I tell people, I think that right there really changed a lot of of my of my outlook at life. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I was, mom was cool, uh, Mike. Yeah. My mom would, you know, my mom would support the basketball. Like she would go buy me basketball from Kmart. Remember Kmart back in the day? Of course. She would go get me the she would go get me the rubber balls like a bounce outside, bro. Yeah. My mom's the first person I seen put a crate on a tree. And make me a basketball hoop, bro. Like, because you got to think about it. My mom was from New York City, so my mom was a New York City girl. Uh, so yeah. she knew about hooping a little bit. Uh, that's different. I so, ain't know that. 
Yeah, my mom was born and raised in Queens, New York. Okay. So the, the the connection me and my mom had was was pretty outstanding. It just sucks on it just sucks the situation that I had to go about, you know what I'm saying, with my mom in the end, you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, man. I'm, but man, I, 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 I don't I don't have a problem talking about my mom's situation because I think if I can voice that to other people, it can help them build relationships with their mom. So they're not worried, you know, like if you lose your mom tomorrow, you don't want to be saying, oh, I wish I could have said this, wish I could have did that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. I so think, I don't mind yeah. speaking my story to anybody that wants to listen to it, bro. Yeah, man. I think something else that can help a lot of people is, you know, what what advice would you give to somebody who experienced something like that? Because, you know, it's a I lot mean, of people. The thing is, honestly, what helped me was, and I, and I say this. I, I, I tell my wife this all the time. I've never been to counseling about it, and she knows that. We, I, I don't even, I, I, I don't even think I've ever grieved about it. But what I did do, Mike, mm. and it's just coming from Tony. What got me through was basketball, bro. Thanks. Like a lot of prayer from my dad and my family members and the people that really love me still to this day. But basketball, bro. Like, yeah. Mike, I don't know what it was, bro, but I couldn't stop playing basketball. Like I wanted, to, like when my wife talked to my dad. I would leave the house. Yeah. I would leave the house at two in the morning, bro, and sneak out the house <laughs> and be at the park. Well, yeah. it got to the point. Well, dad would. It got because the because the police officer, they would they would see me out at the park late at night and pull over and try to make me go home. But I'm mm. like nah. So mm. the homies that was doing their thing late at night, yeah. they see me out there. They are like nah. You know they telling my dad and the police like nah. We got it. He good. Yeah. That's how bad. That's how bad I wanted to forget everything. I wanted to forget yeah. everything out of my head, bro. Because think about it, Mike. Yeah. If I just sit there, Mike, and I just think about my mama, bro, and I'm just grieving, grieving, where am I going to get, bro? I'm going to end up doing something stupid, bro. Yeah, yeah. And and not trying to accomplish the achievements that I need to accomplish. So the one thing that got me through with my mom, bro, that I, I can just rebuttal and tell you, bro, and that is a great question. It was basketball, Mike. Yeah, it was bro. basketball, bro. Man, bro. I'm sad it happened. I'm just happy you at least had a place to, you know, channel that energy into something positive. Oh, yeah, bro. Basketball, Mike. I had to play it. Mike, it got bad for me, bro. I had, I had the Jones for it bad, yeah, Mike. Bro. No, for real, though. That's the it, 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 it was like when we was kids, we wanted that first pair of Jordans. You know what I'm saying? Of course. <laughs> Uh, me, like, I would I always wanted to sneak out, but my dad would have beat my ass if I snuck out the crib. To I just ain't wanted better. Hey, <laughs> hey, Mike, the first couple the first couple times, Mike? Of course. Well, we went rounds. We went rounds. Yeah. But yeah. then when he realized that I wasn't going to stop, yeah. and he, you know what he said? He said, you know what? I'm just going to pray to God nobody don't do that to you. But the, <laughs> That's the homies, funny, had, listen, the homies, would, the, you know what? The old lady down the street, man, mm. her name was Mrs. Johnson, bro. God rest her soul. She would tell my dad, she would say, John, I hear him every night around 1.30, 1, 1 almost 2 <laughs> in the morning, John. He bouncing that ball. Well, guess what, bro? That ball is what got me where we at. Oh, shit. You get what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Half these kids, Mike, don't want to work as hard like we work, bro. These kids want to hand it to them, bro. I was actually out there on that asphalt late at night talking to myself, dreaming about it, like, Believing in it, bro. Like I actually believe that I could play in the league. You get what I'm saying? Like, no, for real. I actually, I knew I could play at a top level school. I mean, but it, it was just if I sat in the house, Mike, all day, bro. I just think about my mama, bro. I had to get up out of there. Like first thing in the morning, I was gone, bro. Yeah, yeah. that's your safe place, though. Like, I had that was my man. safe place, Mike. Yeah, that's perfect, man. So now you high school, so like you, you. You went to Mainland. Well, is like is Mainland like the main school in Daytona? Like, what, what was what was yeah. it like? Okay. So Mainland High School is, is it's on the corner of International Drive and um um it's on the corner of International Drive and Daytona Beach. Hmm. It's literally right next door to the right next door to the International Speed where Daytona Five Hundred. So we were we are five A school. Yeah. So we're top we're top notch, and when I got to high school, bro, like. And we saw Vince, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I had the pleasure, you know what I'm saying, to be around Vince. Yeah. I was like, bro, you know what, bro? I'm going to take this to the next level, too. Facts. And because Vince opened up, the first of all, 
we can say Vince, but let's just let's give him his credit right now. George McLeod opened up the doors for all of us. Facts. So I don't know if you know who George McLeod is, right? Played yeah. with Reggie Miller, played with Indiana Pacers. Yeah, I heard about my knuckleheads. So so George played 14 years in the league, and he's born and raised Daytona Beach. Yeah. You know he 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 he's from right in our hood on the west side, bro. Right. So when he left, Vince came along. And then after Vince, it was me. So right. I just enjoyed, I enjoyed playing. Shout out to my high school coach, Charles Brinkerhoff. Shout out to the whole, you know what I'm saying, Mainland, Mainland High School team, the state championship teams. Yeah. You know, shout out to the cheerleaders. Shout out to the dance team. <laughs> shout out to the trainers, bro. Yeah. Shout out to the trainers, bro. Cause, and, and, and shout out to all the people that was on campus putting up with my shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because to put up with T. Bobby when I was a youngster, bro, like you had to have some goddamn, you had to have some thick skin, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah, shout out to the whole mainland staff, bro. And you know, it's it's it, it was amazing to play. It was a, it was amazing to have the love around the campus and all everybody showing you love. But the most important thing, bro, shout out to Vince, bro, for opening up the door for us, bro. That's what's up. So y'all, so y'all won state. So what is it like to win state? Because most of us, you feel me, listeners, we ain't played college pros, obviously, but most of us play high school, oh, not TL level. But I, niggas play I high won school. State. Niggas, I, we won state a couple times. Okay. I mean, I ain't know that. That's I mean, I'm gonna say this. I'm okay. gonna say this. In the late '90s, Maine High School. We wasn't selling nothing us but a state championship, right. and that's facts. We so got the rings approval. We got the banners to prove them. And we got the players that played college basketball and the ones that played college football to prove it. Yeah. So, it, it, it is what it is, Mike. Yeah, so, that was your expectation. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got to think about it. Vince set that tone. Yeah, of course. So, so, so people don't want to give each other their credit. I'm going to give each other, I'm going to give Vince his flowers right now. Vince Carter set the tone for Tony Bobby. Yeah. Because Vince made it okay. Vince made it okay to get out there and show your talent. You get what I'm saying, bro? Yeah. He made it okay to do that. So when we when we when I got to mainland with my freshman year and I realized like man I'm on a varsity basketball team. I'm starting on a varsity team. Like what's up? Bro, he made it okay, bro. That's you know, cool. he made, and you know guys like guys like Joe Giddens and and TT Tolliver, the seniors at that time. They made it okay, bro. Like they were true leaders and they held you accountable. Of your mistakes, but bro, they made it okay, bro, to have fun, bro. That's fire. You know, that's crazy, bro. You really so I like playing with him really helped you a lot down the down oh, yeah. line type shit. Oh yeah. Of course. So like what what was what was the football scene like in high school though? Because I know that shit had to be crazy uh, in Florida. The football team in high school, man, I'm gonna tell you a good story real quick. Yeah, yeah. Mike, I was supposed to be the star quarterback, Mike. All my buddies, all my homeboys, like, TB going to be the quarterback. We're going to win state. And then he throwing that, you know what I mean? He throwing that bitch. Blah, blah, blah. Well, this is a true story. My homeboy, Arthur Graham. And if he ever hear this story, he going to laugh his ass off. Man, I, I, we were in spring training. We got the full pass on. And I back up in the pocket. Man, I get ready to throw the ball, dog. He come off a blind side. He played safety, I think. Yeah. I think Art played middle, outside linebacker, something like that. Yeah. Man, Art came, man. He hit me, bro. And when he hit me, he put my face down in the dirt. You know what I'm saying? My face, man. Oh, bro, shit. look, bro. I took off all my equipment on the field <laughs> and walked off that bitch with my girdle on. You hear me? My homeboy, my homeboy mama still to this day, Cornelius James. Miss James, she always say, she say, that might be the funniest thing I ever seen. Because the parents was out there when I broke living. To play football in the state of Florida, you got to be a man, dog. Yeah, them boys out shit. there hit. Them, yeah. Hey, bro, them boys out there hit, dog. Yeah. You, you get what I'm, I quit that shit, bro. I ain't play football none. Yeah, yeah, I'm a hooper. Straight hoop. Straight yeah. hoop. That was that shit. Yeah, I know. Uh, Leonard Williams went to y'all school. He played for Who? the Giants. Leonard Williams, he played for the Giants. He was the first one. Oh, yeah, pick. Big Leonard. That's my dog, uh, son, Big Leonard. Y'all, he oh, played yeah. for the Giants. Yeah, sir. That's what's up. And, uh, and uh, I'm going to see who else went to my school. Uh, what's your boy's name, man? Allen. Um, yeah, Ricardo Allen. Ricardo, Ricardo, Ricardo went to Maine. Uh-huh. Denzel Washington went Denzel to my went school in 1979. Too. Hell yeah, I say that too, bro. I say he did a year yeah. now, bro. Yeah, I know he was yeah. good. My school, we, we had a chance. That's about it. Yeah. Bro. Bro. 
That's what's up, man. So, uh, mainland, 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 all right, bro. That shit sound wet, bro. Is that like yeah. that was very established? <laughs> so, yeah, like, yeah. shit. Um, hey, Monster Mike, man, I appreciate you on, you know, you doing this, bro, because, like, I don't mind telling the story, bro, and, you know, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be the people that want these live podcasts, and they just trying to make something out of it, or they, they want to be nosy and, and, and see what somebody got going on, but, bro, yeah. I keep it 100, bro, like, I done been through the ups and downs, bro, and God done blessed me, bro, and yeah, bro, everything ain't peaches, bro, but I'm blessed to be here. I'm, ble- I'm blessed to still be here, bro. You feel me? Hell yeah, I'm on the same show. And that's all what matters, bro. So whatever I could do to continue to help your podcast, bro, you know what I mean? Like, let's just do it, bro. Man, bro, that's all up, man. It really means the world, bro. I just want to hear from you, bro. bro. I just want to hear from you, so shit. That's high school, man. Y'all niggas won state. Vince helped you a lot. You know, that's pretty much what, you know, I expected. But, like, getting it from Florida... I know you did a you did your uh, stop in Southern Idaho. Is that why you out there? You know that's that's how you oh, fell in yeah. Idaho. Shit? Okay, so, okay. So the college of Southern Idaho, yeah. The college of Southern Idaho is the is the winningest junior college in the country, bro. We got more wins and more national championships than any other junior college in the United States of America, bro. You can look that up. Yeah. Uh, the history behind our school is the first head coach at my at my JUCO was Eddie Sutton. Okay. Eddie Sutton Eddie Sutton was the first basketball coach. Now. My JUCO, my starting point guard in junior college was Smush Parker. Oh, shit. Yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. And then my two guard was Cardell Butler, who was on AM1, Ballaholic. Yeah. That's crazy. So, so then I had Blandon Ferguson that played at Illinois. And then we had Kenny Bruner. Did anybody remember Kenny Bruner that played <laughs> at AM1? He was the ice cream dude. He, you know, he played Bad Santa. Oh, shit. So we had a team. Like, the cause of Southern Idaho, bro, when we came out here to hoop, bro, not only did these, the, the, you know, the people change our lives, but, bro, the basketball community is just beautiful, bro. So I was fortunate enough to come out here and, you know, do well and, you know, play well and also win. Hell yeah. That's fire, bro. Yeah, bro. CSI, bro. Cause of Southern Idaho, bro. Please look us up. No, for real. Uh, uh, T.L. Brown. I mean, uh, no, 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 Pierre Brown. Pierre, Pierre, that played at Baylor, that played in the NBA. Pierre went here. Pierre mm-hmm. went to CSI. Mm-hmm. Ed Gray went to CSI. Uh, shit, man, we done had a couple of NBA pros come up out of our JUCO, bro. Yeah. So, shit, I was going to ask how you got to Cincinnati, but I already know y'all was just fucking shit up. Oh, man. Bob Huggins came to Idaho one time. Oh, shit. And he, and he said, if you don't sign right now, I'm going to get Tony Allen from Oklahoma State. <laughs> Because it was either I go to Oklahoma State and Tony go to Cincinnati or I was going to Cincinnati and Tony go to Oklahoma. Yeah, so bro. I signed right I signed right there off the gate, bro. No, you got to give me the Tony Allen impression, bro. <laughs> what, what, what's uh, that man, story you gave Allen, Tony say, at, at the NBA camp, Tony say, come on, Joe. <laughs> I'm like, Joe, who we talking to? He's like, Joe, I'm talking to you, Joe. He's like, TB, come on, man. We're going to get something to eat, Joe. I'm like, man, T. Allen, bro, this Chicago slang is for real, bro. But you know what? <laughs> when we played against Oklahoma State, bro, I promise you, bro, that was a – and, and for those that's listening or those that's going to listen, when I say Tony Allen, bro, that was a nightmare, bro. I'm telling he don't you. let you see – bro, he don't let you see that bitch, bro. <laughs> only time you're going to see that bitch is when you taking that bitch out of bounds or a timeout. That's real. <laughs> Niggas don't know so Tony was up. Tony was giving twenty in school, bro. Niggas just known for defense. He was scoring that bitch in school. Bro. Man, listen, if you from Chicago, you know your shit about Tony Allen, dog. Come on, man. For real, Tony was a monster, bro. I'm just not from out west. I'm from out south and up north, but nigga, of course. Man, Tony was for real, dog. Yeah, D Rose was my nigga, but so mm-hmm. what was the transition like? So you from Florida, now you got to Idaho. Now you transitioning from Idaho to Cincinnati. What's that like? Now you at the you know what I'm saying? You you really where so, you always saw yourself, the big school. So so, like? so my first so my first six games I averaged four points. Yeah. Yeah, I know, right? Mm-hmm. So my first six games, because I didn't want to buy into the system what Bob Huggins had going on. I thought I could do my own thing. Oh shit. But when but when you at that next level, you can't do your own thing. You gotta figure that shit out. You feel yeah. what I'm saying, bro? Hell yeah. My first six games, fellas, I'm telling anybody that's gonna listen and is listening. My very first six games, I averaged four points. <laughs> now, 
he came, I came in that, that third month. He came, he came and got me. He said, Hey, we need to sit down and talk. Coach Huggins. I said, What's up? Yeah. He said, You you much he said you're you're much he said you're a much better player than what you're playing. Yeah. And I, you know, I had an attitude. I didn't want to buy into the system. He was benching me. Yeah. I thought I should be getting more minutes. I wasn't getting more minutes. But one day I'm gonna tell you what happened, Mike. Yeah. I came into the office and Andy Kennedy, who's the head coach at UAB right now, he said, T, let's sit down and talk. He said, what can we do to help better your game? I said, it ain't you guys. It's me. I need to shut the fuck up. I need to, I need to take this shit serious. Let me tell y'all something. Mike, that very next day in practice, Mike, I'm not bullshitting you, bro. And we on the podcast. We live right now. Mm-hmm. Mike, I, I fucked around and bought into the system, bro. And it just changed the whole narrative, bro. It changed the whole fucking narrative, bro. He laid back off me. I started getting buckets. Next thing you know, I'm leading the country in points off the bench as a six man. And then that shit just carried over to the next season, my senior year, bro. And that's the God heaven. Mike, it was like a switch overnight. It was like that next day I came back to practice and I was with the shits, bro. That's what's up. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, because I wasn't going to get it doing it my way. That's real. Yeah, Cause man. my way wasn't no way. Nah, was, <laughs> I know about that senior year. That shit was one for you. He was giving yeah, thirteen yeah. off the my bench, bro. No thirteen off the bench for a fucking Hall of Fame coach, bro. Like that's really an accomplishment. Like you could really yeah. hang your hat on that, like for the rest of your life, type shit, bro. That's really yeah. crazy. And even you know getting the trust of Bob Huggins, like it's, like it's, mm-hmm. it's six people. We got 900 wins in college, bro. He's one of them, bro. And like, mm-hmm. this is guard, bro. That's, that's really crazy to me, bro. Like, that's and Mike, he could. Shit crazy. And Mike, listen, bro. Listen, bro. I played for the best coach in college basketball, bro. Hell yeah, man. I, I know how you feel about what happened with at the end, man. I was doing my research, man. It definitely seemed like some bullshit. Mike, that's if true. I could talk about it, I yeah. would. No, yeah, Trust I already me, know, Mike. but, man, that, that's. Me and me. My heart me goes and out talk to him. talk about hell. it off the, off the mic one day, Mike. I'm telling you. They did my boy dirty dog, but you know what? We still support Coach Huggins. We yeah. gonna always love Coach Huggins. We gonna always respect what Coach Huggins stand for, and Coach Huggins will always be my second father, bro. Cause my coach, my coach made it okay. He made it okay for us to be who we are. Like it's okay to be yourself, and mm-hmm. don't worry about what nobody gonna say about you. Go be yourself, and that's exactly what he did for us, bro. Yeah, straight up, bro. He always was there for us. Still is to this day. That's what's up. Still is to this day. We need him. That's really beautiful, bro. So would you say that's that's the thing you carry with 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 you the most from you know your time you know playing for him, just being yeah the love, the passion he got for his players. Yeah. He didn't put it this way, Mike. He don't do what most college coaches do when the game over with. Say they little goddamn speech in the locker room and then go on about their business. Man, hugs was sitting that bitch with us while we. Bro, we getting ready to change and get ready to get we get ready to get up out of there, bro. He holding conversations, making sure we good, bro. Yeah. Like for he would make the media wait for him because of us, bro. Yeah, that shit is different. Yeah, Coach Huggins, Coach Huggins is a one of a kind, bro. I'm, I'm I'm so glad I made that decision to play for him. Yeah. I'm so glad that I was able to meet his family, Jacqueline, you know, his his daughter Jenna, Mama Huggins. I'm so blessed that I got. I was able to be in their lives, man. I'm still in their lives, bro. And we, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just able to say that I played for Bob Huggins, bro, and I'm blessed for that. Yeah. What was your most memorable, memorable like moment or game playing for, or playing in college in general? Louisville at home because I had quit. I, I missed three games because I had I called myself quitting the team and came back yeah. that next. Came That's the back overtime that next, game. Uh, That's the, I want to overtime. That next week and gave Louisville twenty nine. <laughs> on cool. national TV, Patino and those boys. That's, that was the overtime but game, I right? Because when we talk about memorable game, I got a lot of those, bro. Like uh, the Jimmy V Classic down in New York City against Oregon, number three, uh, Luke Rittenauer and Luke Jackson. <laughs> I had 30 on them. Yeah. Oh, my I don't God, know, man. bro. I had fun, bro. I mean, it was fun, man. I had some fun playing for Bob Huggins. Yeah, bro, that shit, that's amazing, bro. So it's sad, like, you graduated from Cincinnati, right? Yes, sir. So, like, from from that process, graduating, getting to the league, what was that like? And how would Different. you how would you compare it to how it is now? Man, I, so you you asking me 
the transition from college to the NBA, correct? Yeah. It was completely, completely different. You know how you in college and you practice three hours a day and everybody going hard and you like, hell yeah, let's get this. <laughs> bro, I got to the NBA, bro. You liable to practice an hour, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you get yeah. what I'm saying? Crazy. <laughs> All the rookies going to get out there. We going to practice. Kobe, them, Kobe might get out there and run a couple plays. All right, Bobby, your turn. <laughs> but he earned that. They, they earned that right. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? So the transition from college, I was like, man. So I'll tell you what, I'll give you, I'll give you a, gr- a good prime example. You know how when you're in college, you get off the bus, you, you fly into the city, you get off the bus, the team go have team dinner and team lunch, and you watch film? Yeah. And the NBA, Mike, once you get off the bus, the rest of the night, yours. That's right, crazy. So I used to get off the bus and be like, we having team dinner, right? And Gary Vitti, the trainer at the time, Gary Vitti and Chip Schaefer would say, team dinner, what do you mean? You have the rest of the night, man. We'll see you in the morning for shoot around. That's wild. That was crazy, wasn't it, bro? Yeah, so that whole, that shit, that really just changed your whole perspective. So, yeah, man, it was just different, bro. I mean, it was fun. But I tell you, the transition from college to being a pro, bro, was completely, completely different for me. Yeah. So what would you would you say, like, that's one of the main things that, you know, separates people who play in college that make it to the next level? From people who play in college and don't, because once you're in college, you pretty much you got the eyes on you. So, like, what what you think? Yeah, once, you once, once you become a pro, all eyes on you. Yeah. So the different the separation the, the I'm not gonna say separation the the adjustment of of a of a of a college basketball player is you can't even compare it to a pro basketball player right. because because in college you're you you know that you you know that you own this team and you know you gonna you could lose five games tomorrow, but you know you still on scholarship with this university. True. In the pros, you could lose and lose. You'll get traded or you get cut. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's a lot of it's a lot of ins and outs, and it's a lot of things that come with being a pro, man. Yeah. Like what I say, it's a business. It's a business, Mike. <clears throat> and Mike, I'm gonna tell you, Mike. I really enjoyed my career, bro. Yeah. I enjoyed the ups and I enjoyed the downs, Mike. But most importantly, bro, I enjoy watching people smile, man. Yeah. For real, bro. I know you wouldn't change one thing. I wouldn't change one thing, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. That's why niggas fuck with you, bro, honestly. So, like, you actually on the and Lakers, And I appreciate bro. it, Mike, because I ain't gonna lie to you, Mike. When I look in the stand, Mike, I'm gonna tell you what I used to do. Yeah. I used to wait for a timeout and I would turn around and look in the stands and try to find that one kid yeah. that I know that's focused and that I know for a fact that's that and when you look at that kid you could tell that he wants the same thing that you're down there doing. He wants yeah. to play. Hey Mike, I used to take my shoes off my feet and give them away, bro. Yeah. Brand brand new shoes, bro. That's real. That shit probably changed a lot of lives, bro. That's why niggas fuck with you, man. Bro, I, just, I, I just wanted to enjoy people, bro. You know how hard it is for a mom to get two tickets to, to come watch somebody play? Yeah. Or two tickets to come watch somebody play? Yeah. You have to be grateful and thankful of that, bro. Especially them Lakers. Yeah, bro. Yeah, Especially them Lakers. Yeah, bro. 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 Yeah, one of my favorite people on earth ever, sports aside, bro. Like you, you play with him. You got to, got to meet him. Bro. Like, <laughs> he took my Kobe. Nigga, like of course. Like, what was it like actually knowing him, bro, and like practicing with him? Like you, you played the same position as him, bro. Like y'all was on the same team. Like you got stories with this nigga. Like, like what was that shit like, bro? Like, bro, I remember. I remember the first time I met Kobe, man. Yeah. And I was in the locker room. And need I mind you, I didn't make the Laker team at first because they were trying to make a trade. They were trying to make a trade for Kareem Rush yeah. to bring me along. So what yeah. they did, instead of sending me home, the uh, organization put me up in the Risk Carlton Hotel until they made that trade. Yeah. So anyway... When they made that trade, Kareem Rush, he ended up going to the Charlotte Bobcats, and I ended up coming back to the Lakers. Well, to make a long story short, bro, I remember when I saw Cole for the first time, he came in the locker room, and I ain't gonna lie, bro, I was I was kneeling down, tying my shoe. <laughs> and when I looked up, 
he was like, yo, Bobby, what's good? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, what? what's up? He, and I'm thinking to myself, like, man, how does this motherfucker know my name, bro? Like, what is cold? <laughs> how, can you, how can he not know your name? That's his organization. You That's feel right. what I'm saying? Oh, bro. So he knows everybody on the team. And you know what, Monster Mike, I'm proud to say this, bro. And I, I, don't, I, I hate to say this because Cole gone. But, bro, Cole really, really, really did fuck with me, bro. Yeah. Like, Cole may have no problems with me, bro. I, I think that he saw the way I work, how hard I work for the little time that I was there. Yeah. But most important, bro, the, the respect level I had for him and the respect level he had for me. Because at the end of the day, bro, he knew my... He knew my background. He knew where I came from. He knew how hard I worked to get where I was, bro. Yeah. He knew I was just happy and being, being complacent on all that. And I think that when guys like Kobe, LeBron, they see things like that in people, bro, they want to, you know what I mean? They want to they wanna make sure you good. And Kobe made sure I was good, bro. And my, 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 funniest, my funniest Kobe story yeah. is uh, we were on the bus and I was teasing him. I was teasing him about, you know, a couple sweatsuits he used to wear. <laughs> well, he turned around. He turned around one night. He was like, yo, Bobby, <laughs> you know, you you, 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 you you seem real funny, man. But my canary in my ear is worth more than your contract. <laughs> it was yo, Bobby. I, I said, <laughs> what? He said, my canary in my ear is worth more than your contract, man. So you need to chill out. I said, damn, well, I ain't never say no. I ain't never been funny again. <laughs> that shit is crazy. <laughs> That's, that's the but best it was cool. yeah. See, see, I don't like all the narr- all the all the things that said about Cole, the narr- the narrative behind that man. Cole was cool as hell, bro. Yeah. Cole was cool, bro. He was just a businessman, bro. He he wanted to he wanted to make sure when he stepped on the court, bro, he stepped on the court with perfection. Does that yeah. make sense? Hell yeah. So that's my story, uh, Mike, man, with the Cole, bro. Cause Cole was always there for me, bro. I called him up. Yeah. You know, for the for the game, bro. When he gave my son the jersey, bro, yeah. and you know, I'm just thankful for that, bro. Yeah, that, that was the 60 point game he gave to your son the jersey. Yeah, bro. Like That's I'm crazy, just bro. I'm grateful for that, bro. Bro, I remember watching that game, bro. I was with this bitch. I don't even talk to this bitch anymore. No I, I remember watching that show, and I was crazy, crazy. Man. That man, that show was so crazy. So. Last thing about him, what what what's the one thing that stuck with you? Like I asked you about your about coach and Vince. What's the one thing with Kobe that stuck with you? Don't ever let nobody tell you you can't do nothing. You do it yourself and prove it yourself. Then you know you done it yourself. Yeah, it's straight like that, bro. That's Don't perfect. ever let nobody tell you you can't do nothing. You do it yourself. You do you you show them yourself and you 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 know what I'm saying. You able to prove people that you did it yourself, bro. Oh and that's real, bro. Like you can't never ever let nobody tell you you can't do this. Oh, and Cole right. used to say that. Cole, I used to be like, man, I can't finish this last rep, bro. Bobby, yes, you can. We got this. Let's go. And I'm talking about, bro, my arms feel like goddamn. I can't even lift him up, Mike. But he, yeah. but he got that. But he got that mama mentality, bro. Like this, yeah. what we doing, bro? And that's the reason why. So, so Mike, before you go, you gotta think about it. I went from my high school coach to my junior college coach. Yeah, it's top notch. Exactly. To Bob Huggins, to Bob Huggins, to Phil Jackson. Exactly, bro. That's different, bro. You get what I'm saying? Man, that's crazy. So how can, if you're going to be around Kobe and LeBron, how could you not want to work hard like them? Hell yeah. That's yeah. real, ain't it, bro? Hell yeah, bro. That's that's really I mean, crazy. You went from Huggins to Phil Jackson. And even that's the one thing. I, that's the good advice I can give you, Mike, on Kobe, bro. If you, you can't never let nobody tell you you can't do nothing because it's up to you to do it, bro. And if you know you did it and you worked hard at doing it, then you're going to feel good in the morning when you wake up because you know you this is what you've been doing. Yeah, that's fucking amazing, bro. I'm gonna go, that shit gonna stick with me, bro. Man, for real, dog. Man, I appreciate you, Mike. Man, for real, bro. Oh yeah. I'm going. I'm glad I did this with you, bro. At any time, Mike. Man, I just I want you to know, bro. Like this could be the start of your beginning of what you what, what you trying to accomplish, bro. Because guess yeah. what, bro? Everybody, everybody, everybody ain't gonna keep it real on their podcast, bro. TV gonna keep it real, bro. Man, I appreciate like, it. Like, I ain't got time for the Eddie Murphy, bro. I'm gonna come on here and give it to you <laughs> real. I can I be wanting to tell these kids, help these kids, yeah. like be successful. Cause when the basketball is over with and the ball stop dropping, you know, I mean, uh, the ball stop bouncing, then what you gonna do? You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Then what you gonna do? You gotta look yourself in the mirror and become a grown man. Then I don't know, bro. It's, it get it gets tricky, bro. Hell yeah. Man, bro, I appreciate your time fully, man. I know you got to get up out of here for dinner, man. But one last thing, Hey, Mike, thing, you bro. hit me up, man. Anytime, man. Shout out to 
monster mic, y'all, man. Tune in. And if y'all ain't tuning in, y'all ain't doing nothing with yourself. Appreciate Tune in, you, man. man. Well, one last question. If you got any advice for any young athletes or just anybody, you know, trying to trying to let their dreams out, if you got any advice for them, what would it be? The, my advice to this, man, is honestly, bro, honor thy mother and father and your days will be longer, bro. Yeah. Stop being some, stop hanging out with the wrong crowd, get with the good crowd. Don't be no follower, be the leader, man. Because if you could do all those things, man, and my, old, and my slogan is DTLT. If you could do the little things, bro, You'll be fine, bro. So for those of you out there, you young fellas that y'all trying to do something with yourself, DTLT, man. Just do the little things, bro. You ain't got to go out here and just try to prove something to somebody just because. Hey, mm-hmm. go be yourself, man, and then let God take care of the rest, bro. And That's prove, it for me. Prove it to yourself, not these other niggas, man. Hey, That's bro. real. Appreciate it, man. That was love, man. You, you, you just really, man. I have no worries, bro. I appreciate you so man, much. Man, we appreciate you, man. Monster Mike. When you done and whatnot, man, hit me tomorrow, bro. Let's talk on the strength, bro, because I can tell you some more shit, bro, but you know, I'm it is what it bro. is, bro. Hit me up, man. All right, man. I'm going to be on the space tomorrow, man. I appreciate you, bro. I love you so much. Man, Thank listen. You, so much. you let me know how I can find this and listen to it on the podcast, and we go from there, bro. Man, I got you, bro. Shit going to be up in the morning. Much love, Monster Mike. Hey, man. Hey, man. Shout out to Monster Mike, bro. If y'all ain't, hey, if y'all ain't tuning in, y'all ain't doing that. Now, told you, <laughs> That's my nigga, man. I love yeah. you, man. Appreciate man, you so hit me much, up, man. man. Much love, Mike. All right, my boy. Appreciate you. Have a good night, man. Enjoy your dinner. Yes, Enjoy the sir. film. All right, my boy. Peace. What?